Hey guys, this is Goofer King Science, and welcome to part 2 of the homemade cathode ray tube video. Previously I showed you some of the basic components, such as the vacuum pump and the high voltage power supply, and I also fired up the tube and showed you some magnetic deflection. This part's going to go over why the tube does certain things, like why it glows purple, why the beam bends around a magnet, why when an AC current has a magnetic field applied to its beam, it seems to split around the magnet. We'll also explore some mathematical terms like vectors and cross products. The first question I'm going to answer is why the beam glows purple. It has to do with a property called a gas discharge. What happens is, after I pull a vacuum, there is still a little bit of oxygen and nitrogen left in the tube from normal atmospheric air. When the electrical current begins to pass through the tube, it begins to excite these atoms, and their electrons go higher and higher up in the energy levels, and they go further and further from the nucleus. They eventually fall back down to a lower energy state, and when this happens, they emit a photon of a characteristic energy, which results in different types of radiation like infrared, visible light, or ultraviolet. In this case, it appears that oxygen and nitrogen give off a purple-blue color. Now I'm going to answer why the beam bends around a magnet instead of just directly attracting or repelling. There's actually two effects that cause the deflection of the beam. One of them is due to the static charge attraction. This force is in the direction of the object which attracts or repels the charge. This part of the force will not be very high because I don't have a charged object nearby, but there's always some of this effect. The main effect is due to the force caused by a magnetic field on a moving charge. This force is in a direction which is perpendicular to the magnetic field and perpendicular to the direction of motion. If you think of the flow of charge as a vector, and also think of the magnetic field as a vector, the force on the charged particles can be thought of as a cross product to these two vectors. The curving is due to the non-uniformity of the magnetic field. Because of this, the cross product points in many different directions, so instead of just a simple bend, you get a complicated curve. If you're feeling a bit confused right now, that's okay, because I did when I was first learning all this too. Now let's talk about why the path of deflection changes when the electrodes are switched around and why the AC current seems to split when it is affected by a magnet. The reason the path of deflection changes when the electrodes are switched around while the cathode ray tube is running on a half wave or fully rectified current leads back to what I was talking about earlier with vectors. Since the electricity is flowing in one direction, when you change the electrodes around, the electricity is flowing in the opposite direction. So its vector is flowing in the opposite direction, which changes the vector of the cross product to a different direction. Now I'm going to move on to something pretty cool. To explain the reason why the AC current seems to split, I'm going to analyze the cathode ray tube with slow motion. My camera can do 240 frames per second slow motion. Since the AC current that we're dealing with switches direction 60 times per second, we can easily see this happening. Okay, here's slow motion, and when I hold up the magnet to the alternating current, you can see that it begins to split into two beams around the magnet. But you can also see that the dark space is switching. What I realized is that since the alternating current is switching its direction 60 times per second, the cross product is also switching 60 times per second. So it's just switching its path super fast. So like I was talking about earlier, when I switch the electrodes around, it switches its path around the magnet. This is just switching its direction 60 times per second. Instead of having to switch the electrodes around, it just does it by itself. And since it happens so fast in real time, it just looks like it's splitting into two beams. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you the other types of currents in slow motion. Here's half wave rectified with one diode. You can see that it's flashing on and off rapidly, but it is not changing its direction. This is because the diode blocks that back path of the sine wave, so the electric current is only traveling in one direction. It's flashing on and off rapidly because that back section is being blocked by the diode, so it's just turning on and off rapidly. The full wave rectified is flickering, but it's not switching on and off like the half wave rectified did. This is because the full wave rectifier utilizes that back path instead of just cutting it off but there is a small amount of flickering that can be smoothed out with a capacitor. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned a lot from it. I know that I sure did. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, rate, and comment.
See you later. Bye.